Welcome back to the Cinema Club Podcast. My name is Christopher Amick, and I'll be your host for today's episode. The Cinema Club is like a book club, but for movies. Every episode, we invite one member of the Cinema Club to be a co-host for the episode who will choose a movie or television show and join Nick or I on the podcast to talk about that film or television show. However, today we are doing something really special. We are going to be covering our most anticipated films coming out in 2024. It is a new year, which means a new year of new films to anticipate seeing. Not all of them may live up to our hopes or expectations, and there are movies that have not yet been announced that will end up coming out this year, but these movies that are announced will release this year, unless something happens <laughs> later down the road. And since we're 2024 already, hopefully most of those don't move around too much, or at least stick around this year. But we'll be covering our top 25 collective most anticipated films of 2024. And I am joined by Tim, Ruby, and Adam, who just covered our anticipated television series coming out this year. So very excited to have all three of you back for this. Happy Hell yeah. Glad to be back. You've always been more of a movie guy than a TV guy anyway, so I think I'm a bit more in my element this time around, but we'll see. Perfect. That is originally what the Cinema Club wasn't intended for, so we're back on track here. And it's been fun even exploring some of the television shows that have been coming out that we were talking about already, or even some that have come out that were on the list. But definitely wanted to talk about our anticipated movies. That is January. However, the movies that release in January typically aren't of the most anticipated type. So I feel confident about jumping into this list today with you all. Fun fact. Did you know that January and February, like what they're called in kind of the movie industry, it's called the dump months, where they dump the movies they don't think are very good. That actually explains why March is always the month that has mm -hmm. just a massive amount of movies. And there's always a lot of movies to choose from in March, I feel. But January, February is usually where studios put their trash. With that being said, though, our first film, and by the way, to back up, we are going to be going through our top 25 films in release order today. But our first film on the list that Tim, Ruby, and Adam, all three of you had, is coming out February 2nd, and it's Argyle. There are exceptions. Yes, but there are exceptions. But most movies in these months are not great. But yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't even know this movie existed until about two weeks ago when just every feed I had was just flooded with content about it. And it looks like it's going to be one of those movies that's either going to be like absolutely amazing or just ridiculously dumb. But <laughs> I think it could be ridiculously dumb and amazing. And looking here, here. at the cast, the cast looks really good. In addition to that, while I haven't seen his entire filmography, of the Matthew Vaughn films I have seen, that man does not miss. Kingsman, The Secret Service, X-Men First Class, Kick-Ass. He produces straight fucking bangers. That man does not miss. And that alone m makes this film warranting of the top 10 status. But also, there's a cute fucking kitty in the trailers. Let's go. He just took everything I was going to say. <laughs> Actually, both of y'all did. I was going to talk about the cats and talk about all its past movies. And that's the reason why I'm excited about it. Also, the premise of this movie is really good as well. It sounds like a fun movie. I want to completely echo what Ruby said. I think it's going to be incredibly dumb, but also amazing. Dumb and amazing aren't mutually exclusive. Okay. Monty Python, anybody? Let's be honest. And I honestly don't know anything about the film. I do have a I haven't blurb seen it. Nothing. pulled up if you want a very yeah, short great. overview. So basically, it's about an author, L.A. Conway, who writes best-selling espionage novels. But her novels start to mirror reality, and basically the stuff she's writing about is actually happening. So a ton of spies, like, go after her, and the spy has to save her and her cat from, like, death. And it's, it's like they want to know what's going to happen next, and all these people are after her to find out. Because they're like, she knows what's going to happen next. And it's really interesting, just like a promise, and with a cat, and then you have a ton of really big names. You've got Dua Lipa, Henry Cavill, 
Brian Cranston, Samuel Jackson, and John Cena. I, I like Samuel L. Jackson in comedy action movies, so I'm excited for it. You can never go wrong with John. Oh. I'm sorry, I had to. The only problem is you can't see him. Oh, oh that's true. Maybe he'll play an invisible <laughs> man or something. Also, Sam Rockwell and Bryce Dallas Howard are in it, too. Indeed. Oh, okay. So it's like a loaded cast. It is. It looks like it's going to be very funny. And a lot of movies that I have seen that are coming out this year are maybe a bit more darker, heavier, but still good go- content. And it is sometimes fun just to have a just a fun, funny movie that's still enjoyable. Yeah. And I feel awesome. like Matt Devon is just the perfect guy to be directing a movie like this. Oh, I completely agree. He does a very good job of balancing action sequences with jokes and maintaining a light pace. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, not every film needs to be The Godfather. A light, funny action comedy is what you need sometimes. Absolutely. Switching tracks a little bit, The Dune Part 2. This one did make it onto all four of our lists, which I think makes it the film of the year for us personally. It was my most anticipated film last year. Mine so. too. Mine <laughs> three. It was it did come so out. mad when it got delayed. So it's my most anticipated film this year. Yeah. It's also my most anticipated film for yes. this year by far. Okay, the first Dune was my number one film of 2021. It was between that and Shang-Chi, but ultimately Dune won. Because in my private opinion, it is the second best looking film of all time. In terms of how the film looks and its cinematography and how well it's shot, the only film that beats it is 2001 A Space Odyssey. I don't quite remember the director's name, but I know yeah. it's, it's a very complicated last name. Yes. But he did such a good job. And as someone who read the book, which was an endeavor, and does have a very special place in their heart for the 80s version, I was just so excited when this first one came out. I lost my mind and have been so excited for this second one. I think it's going to be incredible. And the first movie had an incredible cast with Timothy Chalamet. Zendaya, Dave Baptista, Rebecca Ferguson, and a ton of others. And now this, with this part two, they've got Austin Butler, Florence Pugh, Christopher Walken, Barry Kogan, and Lee Syndux. And like, it's an incredible cast with an incredible director and just really a great plot where I really want to see this book and world done justice and i think it finally is going to get it indeed yeah totally agree with you there ruby uh this was the first film that i saw i should say the first dune was the first movie i saw in the theater when covid was starting to slow down so i know it released on max at the same time but ruby was like hey we gotta go see this on the big screen and we saw it on IMAX, and I'm glad we did because, again, like you're saying, Ruby, it is incredible just visually. And the trailer alone for Dune 2, again, the visual looks amazing. In addition to that, carrying on from what part one did well, I think that's the best score of Hans Zimmer's legendary storied career. And part two still has him, and I think it's going to continue on with that track. Right, you have- took my life. I'm oh. talking about Hans Zimmer. <laughs> I, I have never experienced something quite like sitting in IMAX theaters and just through the speakers, bagpipes being blasted in a high fantasy fight. Honestly, I was shocked. And I think Hans Zimmer is the only person who could have ever pulled it off, putting orchestral bagpipes into a sci-fi <laughs> movie. At first, I was like, this is weird. And then I was like, but it's wonderful. And just there's so many elements that go into this movie that just everything is just on point fantastic i know there is and it's a very complicated movie to get right because so much of what happens in the story is in characters heads and it's how do you do that do you have more dialogue do you have this do you have that and the way the director did it is he showed it through visuals where just everything is just, I don't know, very much camera movement, very much 
the way the camera's positioned and it's just visually stunning and i'm super hyped for this new part two yeah yep. i am a big fan of zendaya and timothy so i'm really excited to see them share the screen together in this and i hope so much success for this movie because if this movie is successful we will get a trilogy based on dune messiah and i want it to happen please watch the movie <laughs> show up with your money oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah and i've watched this on multiple streaming services and it still lives up like i've watched it probably five times on hbo max and every time it's still amazing it lives up go watch it so you can go to theaters and get us a sequel so the third movie we had on our list that, that comes out the following week looks like on march 8th ruby had on your list it's called damsel I'm not familiar with this one at all, honestly. Yes. So this is a Netflix original, and I don't believe it's coming out in theaters, which is a bit of a shame because looking at the trailer, it's visually stunning. I had seen a lot of stuff about this movie, and I was very skeptical about it, where I was like, I don't know about this. I finally went and watched it, and it looks good. It looks really good. It's about, it stars Millie Bobby Brown, and basically- That's a good start. She is this princess who's decided to go marry this stranger for reasons. And she gets betrayed and basically trapped in a cave with a fire-breathing dragon. And she has to figure out how to get out. And as simple as that premise may be, when I watched the trailer, I was actually so interested in it. Because the way they decided to put this trailer together, where it's this hauntingly beautiful music with these gorgeous visuals very little dialogue very little you don't know everything that happened in the movie and it just seems very intriguing and millie's acting seems really incredible so i think it might actually be a very solid film that i am excited for oh and also robin wright is in it which I'm always very excited to see her. She starred in The Prince's Bride and she came a comeback with Wonder Woman. And this is, I think she's been a couple other things, but this is the first thing I'll be seeing her for a while. So I'm excited for that as well. Very cool. Millie Bobby Brown versus a dragon is a good premise to a movie. I'm in. Yeah, Millie Bobby Brown's getting that Netflix money. Love right, it. Please. Number four on the list comes out the same day, actually, Ruby, March 8th. I had on my list, it's called Love Lies Bleeding. Not sure if anybody's familiar with that one. Honestly, this is the best looking trailer I've seen this year for any film. I highly recommend you guys go check it out. The premise of the film is Lou is a reclusive gym manager who falls hard for Jackie, an ambitious bodybuilder who's heading to Las Vegas to pursue her dream. Their love soon leads to violence as they get pulled deep into the web of Lou's criminal family. It is an A24 film, has Katie O'Brien and Kristen Stewart along with James Franco in the film. Yeah, I don't know. The trailer just spoke to me, though, when I saw it a month or two ago. I was like, I gotta go watch this. It's something that's a little bit off the beaten path as far as like big movies coming out this year. But it definitely was making my top 10 just because it felt so different, the unique take on that kind of story it's two women in love and having to deal with Kristen stewart's criminal family throughout the whole experience so yeah like i said i thought it was like the best trailer for a movie i've seen all year now just to clarify it's a lesbian romance yes yes I okay that changes that. the dynamic <laughs> quite a bit because i thought it was a heterosexual relationship if it's a, okay my bad. if it's a non-heterosexual <laughs> relationship that makes it infinitely more interesting, in my opinion. Yeah, no, definitely. Lou is the gym manager, and then Jackie is the bodybuilder who's, I'm guessing, working out in Lou's gym, and that's how they meet. Honestly, you have me at 824. That's all I need to know. Time, yeah. <laughs> I am intrigued, I will say that. Yeah, and it should be a full theatrical release, from my understanding. I didn't see it hitting streaming services the same day, from what I was seeing. Look. I'll have to look in that for theaters. That sounds like a good double feature. Yeah, definitely. Go see Dune. <laughs> and then the next week, go see Love Lies Bleeding. Yeah. I wanted to take a moment to thank our Cinema Club supporters. Your monthly contributions are appreciated and help keep the show running 
and growing, as it definitely does take a few software and editing subscriptions on Nick and I's end to create these episodes. If you love the show and would be interested in financially supporting the Cinema Club for even 99 cents a month, visit our website and click the Support This Podcast button. You can check that out at podcasters.spotify.com slash pod slash show slash the cinema club. Let's jump back into the episode. Number five on the list, we have Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. And Ruby, you had that one on your list. Another yes. March release. Yeah, it comes out March 22nd. And honestly, so this follows Ghostbusters Afterlife, which if you haven't seen, I was extremely skeptical about. And was like, I don't think it's going to be that good. I watched it. Maybe my favorite Ghostbusters movie. I think it did a really good job incorporating the, if you're a fan of the original Ghostbusters, I think it paid really good homage to it while also just making it its own thing and being really good. And when I watched the, and I, when I'd watched the trailer the first time, I was like, I don't know how I feel about it. And I'm giving this one the benefit of the doubt because I watched the trailer and I was like, oh, I don't know. But then I was like, but the last one was so good. So I put it on my list. And it's the Spengler family, which is the family follows in the first one. They return to New York City to the firehouse of the original Ghostbusters because a evil force has been unleashed in New York. And new and old Ghostbusters reunite to protect their home. It stars Bill Murray, Finn Wolfhard, McKenna Grace and many others. Paul Rudd is in this, and he does just such a good job in the last one. I'm so excited to see him again. I think it's going to be really good. I really liked the first one of this, and it does a really good job of bringing the old and mixing it with the new, so I think it'll be a bit of a nostalgia ride, but also just a fun time. So no, just a quick question for you, Ruby. On a scale of one being the weakest, 10 being like uh, the best rating possible, how would you rate the original Ghostbusters movies so I can judge my pr- a rating, oh, if that I makes wa- sense? I watched it a really long time ago. I would say out of the original three and then the random one they did that was all female, which I actually liked. I liked it, but I understood that it like didn't quite fit in. I would say the original one is maybe like the second best, like top three. I really, I really like it. And I think if you like the first one, you're really going to Ghostbusters Afterlife because just so much. I, cause I did watch that years ago and I rewatched Ghostbusters. And then when I was watching Ghostbusters Afterlife, so many things were like coming back or talked about or done again. And I was like, but in a very respectful, nostalgic way. And I thought it was great. And I had a really fun time with it. All Sounds right. Like I need to rewatch. To Sounds like I need to watch Afterlife. Because I was also skeptical. And that skepticism made me not watch it at all. Yeah. Other people were watching around me. So I was like, I guess I'll watch it. And then I was like, oh, wait, this is really good. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, because I also saw the all-female Ghostbusters movie in theaters. And... The problem with it for me was it had too much improvised humor and not enough scripted humor. And the improvised jokes just did not land with me. I have no problem with the all-female cast. Everybody was cast well. There were some funny stuff happening, but not enough of the jokes landed for me. So I didn't see the new Ghostbusters in theaters. But if you give it a good rating, I might go see it then. The Ghostbusters Afterlife doesn't actually have any tie-in with the female Ghostbusters. Where I know like the female Ghostbusters was like set in the same universe as the original Ghostbusters, but basically the family that it follows is the grandchildren of one of the original Ghostbusters. And they go out to his farm and Paul Rudd's like their school teacher and weird stuff is going on and it's discovering their legacy and heritage while also discovering this like new world of ghosts. And it's really good. Yeah, I also need to check out Ghostbusters Afterlife then because that was something I skipped along with some of you all as well. (laughs) Be transparent. But thank you for sharing, Ruby. I did want to go to Tim. You had Godzilla vs. Kong, the new Empire, coming out March 29th. Yes, I did. If you all haven't figured this out by now, I'm a sucker for a good big blockbuster action movie. And I really like the way that the universe has built up these movies. The original Godzilla with Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Cranston was mid-tier, but Kong Skull Island was a straight-up banger. 
And then Godzilla versus Kong was one of the best theater experiences I ever had. It's not as good of a movie, but watching Godzilla and Kong fight each other was one of, no, I'm sorry. Godzilla versus Kong was the sequel, was the next one. Godzilla King of the Monsters was the next one in the series. That one was one of the best theater experiences ever with my sister. And we had one of the best sibling bonding times ever. And we were both stunned with how good the action sequences were. And the plot was pretty good too. And everything about it worked. Nothing ever felt like it overstayed its welcome. And I saw the next one. It wasn't quite as good, but it was still very enjoyable. And I just love monster movies. I love action movies. And this is just has Tim written all over it. And I just am really excited to continue seeing where this franchise leads. Do you happen to know, Tim, is it picking up like a while after the last film? Oh, uh, think so. I have intentionally not looked up that many details so I can have as little spoiled for me as possible. Oh, okay. But I saw that was coming. I'm like, oh, this is happening. Yeah, because I wonder if they'll explore the the core of the earth more than this new one. Yeah, for sure. And one of the things that I might have to give the movie a series of criticism for is we haven't really had that many repeating characters from movie to movie. So right. it's like its own new thing. So it's hard to get invested in certain characters when you have to relearn who these new characters are and what dynamic and figure out who you want to follow and who you don't want to follow, who's annoying, who isn't, blah, 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 all that stuff. That is the one like major criticism I'll give this franchise. But otherwise, as long as they have some good sequences of the monsters beating the crap out of each other, I'm happy. That's really what I need. As long as it delivers on that point. Yeah. No, awesome. Yep, Ruby, I did see you had Arthur the King. And that comes out March 25th. Yes. yes, I did. So this is based off of a book that's based off of a true story. It stars Mark Wahlberg, which I mm. really like his acting. It's also got Simu Liu from Chi. Oh, cool. And a couple other pretty known good actors. Basically, it follows a guy who's doing the Dominican Republic race, where it's like couple weeks where you're just like going over cross country mountains zip lining rafts all this stuff and basically this dog just joins this team and runs this race with them and it's kind of like mark Wahlberg's character and the dog sort of bonding i'm a sucker for a dog story so i put it on because it does look really good and I really like Mark Wahlberg movies, so I think it's going to be a solid film. No, sound anything with Mark Wahlberg is usually at least something to check out a trailer for at, at, at a minimum. Okay, I can already tell you this is not going to be a weekend release for me. I'm going to wait and see because the one spoiler I need to know is does the dog die? Because I don't I, think I, the dog dies. You never know, though. Any movie where the dog is the main character. That is a major concern. Mark and then Wahlberg's when the dog the dies, you relive your childhood dog dying. And I, I just don't want to deal with that again. I think that's super fair. <laughs> that, that is a good point. I will admit that. But from what I've seen, I don't think the dog's going to die, Tim. So now okay, if you're going to watch a dog's, what is it? A dog's life or something like that. Don't watch that. Watching my dog skip three weeks after my dog died as a kid. That was traumatizing. I, I didn't realize that I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. Oh, crap. I'm too invested. I have to finish the movie. I watched Lilo and Stitch the day my dog died, which was not smart. Because I was like, oh. oh, this is funny. It'll cheer me up. I completely forgot she adopts him as a dog. I was like, I'm an idiot. And also, he reminded me of my dog. And I was like, this was really dumb. Number eight on our list is Civil War. And Adam and I had that on our top 10 anticipated list for 2024. It is a movie with a concept that hits super close to reality. I have a quick little blurb about the plot to give an idea of what it's about. In the near future, a team of journalists travel across the United States during a rapidly escalating civil war that has engulfed the entire nation. Struggling to survive during a time when the government has become a dystopian dictatorship and partisan extremist militias regularly commit political violence. Obviously, we're in a state where we're pretty divided and whatever. So it is very much on, I would say, the heartbeat of how potentially could trend, which is just already, oh man. But what 
kind of sold me on the movie was the trailer and, and how it did a good job of being vague with the plot and also like how it created tension. There's this one part where the journalists are talking to a military guy played by Jesse Plemons. He's in, he's gotten in a lot of movies, but I think his start was like in Breaking Bad. Yeah. And those yeah, last that's couple seasons. From. And they're like, hey, we're American. And there's this real long pause. And he's, what type of Americans are you? There's just like legit tension there. So I feel like this is like a feast or famine movie. Like, it's either going to be like super awesome or potentially like really bad. But I love that. I love that. I love the volatility. It's got a lot going for it. The director, Alex Garland, has a super sick resume. He was one of the writers for 28 Days Later. He directed and wrote Dread 2012. Ooh. Ooh. He wrote and directed Ex Machina and Annihilation. Off the back of that and that pretty super tense trailer, and the concept being interesting, even though it's like really close to reality, I'm like, you know what? Sign me up. It also has, I already said about Jesse Plemons. It also has Kristen Dunst, who we haven't, I don't think we've seen her in a lot of things recently. And Nick Offerman from Parts and Rec fame. I think he plays the president. Yeah, I believe so. Jefferson White is also in here. Oh, uh, yeah. He's, he's in Yellowstone for anybody that watches that show. And he's really good in that yeah uh, thank you for sharing a little bit about the film there adam because i really have no idea what to expect except <laughs> from the obvious <laughs> yeah. i do think it's very interesting that they are choosing to release this in an election year when people are already politically charged so i think that will probably help it at the box office i i will say too just from the trailer it seems like they did take steps to try and make it seem like this is out there quite a bit because i think in the trailer it's like california and texas teamed up and they're seceding from the <laughs> union and it's like, okay i don't know if that would be the exact scenario yeah. we'd, we'd be seeing but it's fantasy yeah <laughs> it's, very, yeah, it's, a it's a very political fictional. drama i think it's really interesting like you said adam the whole jesse plemons character honestly sold me on this movie because like we were saying he asks these people like, oh, what kind of American? Which I, I feel is something that we run into today. If, yeah. You know, it's so, such a simple line too, but now he delivers it. I hate to say it. It's, this is both it's like a backhanded compliment, but he's so good at playing an asshole. Not even like an asshole, like a super sinister, bring in the bad vibes. Yeah. <laughs> asshole. I get chills. He's, really he's played some characters that have given me chills. How cold yeah. it is. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. He's, but, he's perfect for that. Oh, yeah. The, 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 he's got like the whole military uniform on, the super red sunglasses. And I'm like, this is going to be a fun one, I think, to see. And I'm, I'm hoping it sticks to landing. I, I really do. I'm definitely interested to see if this is something like a standalone film or if it eventually gets like a sequel or it becomes like a trilogy or something. Because I could see like the Purge movies, how they've made like a ton of those. Like this could, I feel like, go down that lane where it's, oh, yeah, in a not so distant future America. The talent is there. There's so much talent involved in the movie. So I'm banking on that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, trailer is really well done, though. I, I will say it definitely sold me on the film. So check it out if you have it. It doesn't really give anything away because I don't even know who the main character is in this thing yet. That comes out uh, April 12th, by the way, in case I didn't say that. But coming out April 26th, I had Challengers on my list. That's another film coming out that has Zendaya in it. And... I honestly love Zendaya. I'll watch just about anything with Zendaya in it. But she plays former tennis prodigy turned coach, is married to a champion on a losing streak. Her strategy for her husband's redemption takes a surprising turn when he must face off against his former best friend and Tashi's former boyfriend. I personally love sport drama films. And so this was like already something I was interested in. The trailer is wild. And I was like, okay, I'm interested. According to the trailer, the movie's going to take place with the characters as younger people, like teenagers, and then it'll fast forward to them as adults. So I think it's going to be really interesting to mm. see. And Zendaya is playing both versions of herself. I, I think the other characters may be as well. 
because they're all young adults as well. But have you guys seen the trailer for that one by chance? Yeah, that trailer broke the internet yep. pretty much. Oh, okay. That's the only way I know about it. <laughs> it broke the internet because this was Zendaya's character and the whole love triangle, whatever you yeah. want to call it. And then everyone was like, oh, poor Tom. I, yep. like, okay. I actually haven't seen the trailer, but that sounds interesting. That sounds like a lot of sexual tension. Watch the trailer. <laughs> yep. Okay. I will have to do that then because I have a feeling that this has the potential to be the horniest movie ever made, but also yeah. maybe not. The guys they cast as the husband and the ex-boyfriend, I, they couldn't have cast a more beautiful cast. It's <laughs> I was like, really? What the heck? Okay. It was probably like on my top 10, it was probably like 11th or 12th, but it's a movie I expect to see this year, 100%. Sports, drama, love, relationships. It's good stuff. What more, could, what more can you ask for? Next on the list, we have... The Fall Guy, and that's number 10, and that comes out May 3rd, Ruby. That's your Yes, uh, this comes out May 3rd. And I discovered this movie yesterday night, and I'm actually just so surprised I haven't heard about it because the cast is stacked. To give you just a few rundown, Ryan Gosling is starring in it with Emily Blunt, Aaron Taylor-Johnson, Stephanie Hsu from Everything, Everywhere, Everything, All at Once. Hannah Waddingham from Ted Lasso and Winston Duke from Black Panther. And this is a comedy action film. Ryan Gosling plays a stuntman who, after a year of being out of business, comes back. And the movie that he is a stuntman for, the main actor goes missing. And... He's, like, trying to figure out what kind of is happening. And he gets ensnared in this Senator Sin plot. And it looks, once again, one of those movies that's going to be really dumb, but really good at the same time. I think Ryan Gosling has proven himself in both the comedy and action movies with Barbie and The Gray Man, which, in my opinion, is one of the greatest action movies I've ever watched. And was just an incredible cast and what looks like to be a really fun and interesting plot. I think it's going to be a good movie. And I can safely say after about 45 seconds of research and your spill, this should have been on my top 10. <laughs> I don't know how this got through the cracks, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. Looks- I looked at 20 lists to find my movies and this was nowhere on it and at about 2 a.m i was just randomly flipping through trailers and i discovered this and i was just like where has this been hiding and why is no one talking about it yeah ruby that means you haven't been to the theater recently because i've seen it as a trailer for almost every movie i've been to for the past three movies all right Um, yeah i haven't been to the theater in a long time so that's probably why also I did more research for this movie. The director has a godly resume. He co-directed John Wick 1, Atomic Blonde, Deadpool 2, and Bullet Train. I'm Hold all about the it. fuck up. It's oh so my gosh. Bullet so train. this may be, okay, maybe I should really strike comedy action and say action comedy because <laughs> That is a god, god tier. Yeah, that is awesome. I was considering putting this in my top 10. And now I'm regretting not doing so because I didn't know that information. Also, it looks like there may be something between Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. Maybe love interest or exes or ex co Either way, beautiful people in love. Why not watch it? Yes. I am very excited just from you sharing, Adam, the director's film history there. Bullet Train. That's one of the best movies that's come out like the last two years, honestly. So it that- was my favorite film of that year. I've been okay. wanting to see it since it was released, and I still haven't. <laughs> if you're down to do another podcast, Chris, sorry, that's a joke. Anyways. No, I would totally be down to do Bullet Train. Well, just, let's do it. But cool. So that might be a sleeper hit. Sounds like, Ruby. We're all on board from just what you've shared and what Adam's researched in the last two minutes. So definitely checking out. Is it called The Fall Guy? Yeah, The Fall Guy. Okay, May 3rd. Awesome. So next on the list, coming out May 24th, Tim... Adam and myself, we all had Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Yes. This is my most anticipated film 
of the year. I am a big apes fan. I'm really hoping this one lands. <laughs> I have words. I don't want to bring them down. Go for I it, did, Adam. I did research. I want to start off by saying the trilogy, the Planet of the Apes, Dawn of Planet of the Apes, War of the Planet of the Apes with Andy Serkis is like a masterpiece. A masterclass of how do you do a trilogy. A lot of that had to do with star-studded casts and all three with different people with Andy Serkis being the glue that brings it all together. I was just hearing about the movie because of that. So much goodwill has been built up that I was like, yeah, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Okay. So I'm going to watch it just based off that. But I did like research when looking at the top 10 and I couldn't help but notice it's like a new director. It's a completely new cast, but like a solid cast, totally down. And like, they only have one writer from the original trilogy. So a lot of new faces attached to this. I'm going to watch it. 100% watching it. Sign me up. But I'm admittedly a little hesitant. Okay, now that you've said that, that actually makes me feel a bit better about the new franchise because it means that we're going to go in a different direction. The writing won't get stale. Sometimes if you keep the same people, everything can get stale and stagnant. Sometimes a fresh face is what you need. I think it can go either way is my thing. So I actually feel a bit better now that you say that we've got some new faces, new cast. That makes me feel a bit better. Also, if we're going to keep in line with the same story, if some time has passed, then why shouldn't we have gotten some new characters? So I think that fits in line with what the movie is going to be trying to do. So I'm actually feeling a bit better about it. And I agree with you 100%. The original trilogy is a master class on how to do a trilogy. I do think the titles of one, movies one and two should be switched, but that's a minor complaint. And I will also say the second movie was, again, a top five theater experience for me ever. One of my buddies when I saw it in theaters, he said, Tim, you were quiet during the movie. You didn't laugh. You didn't do anything. You were just quiet and just eyes glued to the screen. You're never that way during movies. You're always <laughs> laughing or making like a side comment or, oh, why? Did you see that? Or something like that? No, you were quiet. And as all of you have figured out by now with this podcast, I am not a quiet person. It's so uh, good, Ruby. Oh, I was just going to say, as someone who has seen all of the Planet of the Apes and by all of them, all of them, and yes, the did not movies. enjoy them. I did not enjoy the 60s that creeped me out. I never liked when people <laughs> bring them up. I did watch all of the trilogy that came out and uh, the best ones by far. And I did enjoy them. I didn't put it on my list because I was like, oh, Planet of the Apes. But I will be going and seeing it, no doubt, with my entire family in theaters because they're all very big fans. Yeah. I will say, though, that the trilogy that came out was very good, especially as someone who doesn't like Planet of the Apes, it was good. Yeah, this comes out May 24th, I believe, and my birthday is June 1st, so I'm definitely planning to go see this for my birthday. A little rundown of the film. Many years after the reign of Caesar, a young ape goes on a journey that will lead him to question everything he's been taught about the past and make choices that will define a future for apes and humans alike. As we're talking about, Adam, new director, Wes Ball is directing. He made those Maze Runner movies probably better than they had any right being. So I am hopeful. I have always loved the ape movies. I personally love the 60s ape movies. What are those? Five or six of them? I love them. Five. Okay. Yeah. I, oh man, I love those. I don't know why. Is it six? Because there's that random one with like, I think it's actually Mark Wahlberg where they redid the first one. one. We don't talk about that. And it was so bad. That is. Oh, th- th- that that I, was a remake, Ruby. That's not. Part I of the watched series. all That's six remake, of those yeah. within two months, and I was like, "What am I doing with my life?" <laughs> two months. Yeah, I yeah that Mark two Wahlberg weeks. one. I don't, I don't like that one. That's the one Apes film that I watched a few times, but I, I don't like it. But other okay, than that but, one, I will say, based off of what you said, the plot is about. I feel like these movies just are constantly circling each other, where it's always battling who's the apex predator, who's in charge of the planet, and basically, it's always just a revolution, and then it's like. Someone else is on the bottom, someone else is on the top, and I feel like maybe it's just going to be that cycle continuing. Yeah, I am hopeful that this is the beginning of a new trilogy, so maybe we'll end up by the end of this new trilogy where the original 60s movie started, is what I'm hoping. Because that was the future, wasn't it? Like where the 60s movies were, it was the future, (laughs) and then they went back in time, which is when Caesar came, 
And then the trilogy was Caesar. So technically speaking, they could just do a whole roundabout by where the end of the new trilogy that's coming out is the beginning of the 60s trilogy. Exactly. That's what I'm hoping. I do. But anyway, I am very excited for it. I'm glad you all are very excited for it, except maybe Ruby. It sounds like you're interested in it, which is totally fine. The trailer, though, looks very good. What's that quote? What a beautiful day or something like that. I was like, <laughs> OK, I'm sold. Anyway, moving on, though, from Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, the uh, Saint actually, May 24th, Tim and Adam, you are also going to be <laughs> seeing Fur- Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Okay, Adam's going to go first because I stole all of his thunder for the Matthew Vaughn movies. I've stolen his thunder like twice, though, so he gets to talk first this time. So go ahead. So, yeah, 100%. I'm watching this opening day. Furiosa is a prequel to Mad Max Fury Road. And Mad Max Fury Road was my first Mad Max movie. And it made Mm -hmm. me eventually go and watch the rest of the movies. And, man, I can't really... The experience I had watching Mad Max Fury Road is unlike really movie I've seen before. I consider it like a top five action movie that I've seen, period. And when you boil it down, it's just a big car chase scene. But it has really compelling characters, super awesome action pieces. There is a use of visual effects, but it's to a minimum because the stunt work for that film was like actually crazy. Driving at high speed and they had people on these poles I would say 10 feet above the car or something like that, actually doing that. It was just an awesome world. You had Tom Hardy, Charlize Theron and as like the main actors. And yeah, without spoiling anything, it was just a great movie. Pun intended, it was a wild ride. I didn't find out about this movie till last year, but I think casting Lana Taylor Joy as a younger Furiosa, perfect. I've seen the trailer. I'm not certain. Because I want to go in as blind as I can for this movie. My but, man. Um, Chris Hemsworth, I think, is a bad guy. But he gets to finally use his, like, Aussie act. I guess he's New Zealand, but whatever. His, like, New Zealand accent to play what seems to be, like, a larger-than-life type of villain character. And, yeah, it just seems really fun in a post-apocalyptic desert world. It's still directed by George Miller. So I feel so confident in this man. And that the action scenes are going to be, like, top-notch. And, yeah, I just, I'm i going to watch it. And I hope it fulfills the very high expectations I have for this movie because they are very high, admittedly. Okay, my expectations aren't quite as high as yours. However, I'm still expecting it to be really good because, as you already established, the Re- Mad Max Fury Road is a masterpiece, and no other word will do. That movie is an how-to-make-an-action-movie good, how-to-make-an-action-movie interesting. Secretly, it's one of the smartest movies ever made because it has a lot to say about it as well. And that's also partially why I'm reserving that because I feel like this is a prequel. It's not going to have as much to say because, again, it wasn't the original things, but I'm down for more action sequences, lots more car chases, lots more blowing shit up. I am down like a groundhog for all of it, and I need it in my veins now. Yeah, I'll have to talk to you both after this but i have never watched any of the films i want to want okay to, so i can dive we into both, i don't know if you noticed we both had a very visceral reaction but that's okay. <laughs> okay i'm not as big of a fan of the original trilogy as adam probably is i think they're pretty good action movies from the 70s but i'm not as much of a diehard fan however mad max jury road is a 10 out of 10 banger and as adam said one of the greatest action movies of all time yeah. You, a smart person and a dumb person can both enjoy it for the same reasons. However, if you're looking for a smart movie, it is very smart. What is crazy, I do think the trilogy has an apex at Mad Max Fury Road, which is so crazy because those movies are like 30-ish years apart. And the original Mad Max had such a small budget. I believe it's one of the films that, like, in terms of its budget to box office, had one of the craziest ratios I believe it was a film in Australia, and that was like Mel Gibson's first role, and that's what put him on the map. The first one, admittedly, you kind of feel the small budget, especially and because of how dated it is. The second movie, obviously, off the backs of how successful that first one is, it has more of a budget. It feels like more of a complete production, but yeah. there's still something lacking there. 
I feel like the third one, Fury Road, pretty five ish years later, is hold on. Are you just completely retconning Beyond the Thunderdome? No, sorry. Because Fury Road, the fourth movie in the franchise. Yes. What did you guys I, think about the trailer for this one? Because as someone that hasn't watched the other films, I was skeptical a bit of the special effects, and maybe they aren't quite done yet. Okay, no, no. The trailer is actually what sold me on it because okay. when they announced they were making another Mad Max movie, I'm like, bro. Why are you making another one? Your leg was a masterpiece. We don't need another one. Why are you trying to impugn this great film? And then I saw the trailer. I'm like, and then I'm like, oh my God. Okay, never mind. I am down. And actually, the visual effects are intentional. It looks weird, yeah. but it works with the way the film is made. The visual okay. effects in Fury Road are also funky. It's an artistic choice, intentionally made, and it works. Good and if you're skeptical on the visual effects, you should definitely watch it in with the film. And mm. use the first film as like a basis for that. You definitely need to watch it. You don't need to watch the original trilogy in order to watch Fury Road. You can still watch Fury Road standalone. However, for pop culture references, I would say you should probably watch the original trilogy anyway. Yeah, I think this is a little telling, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, my brain unintentionally retconned, I think, Mad Max 2. Because I was thinking of Thunder. That, yeah, my bad. Okay. But I think okay. that said that, something. And that is wild because 2 is widely regarded to be the best of the original trilogy. And three is why they consider it to be one of the weakest films because, uh, and it, it, it takes a very weird turn. Yes. And I'm not going to say more than that. I was just going to say Chris Hemsworth actually is an Australian actor. So you had is it right he? the first time. Oh yeah. my yes, God. Is. Somewhere over there on that side of the world <laughs> is where he lives, I promise. There's kangaroos or something. I don't know. So next up, we're getting into June now. June 7th, Adam and I are planning to go see ballerina which is a john week prequel i don't know well a whole lot of is it okay it's not a prequel it's not in the same universe isn't it it is in the same universe it takes place between the third and the fourth film oh, so it's whatever okay, you call bad. a movie in the middle of the timeline i don't know what you call that yes we'll call it an ad spin off spin off um, is the correct term there we go that is the correct term i don't know why i put so much thought on that I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'll just keep it 100. I know next to nothing about this film. All I know is who's in it. I know the universe. And I know the director. And that's all I need. Sign me up. Because the John Wick universe, I'm all about. I didn't realize that's what that film was. I saw it in Canada. I'm like, Ballerina? I don't want to watch the Ballerina movie. But if it's in the, related to John Wick, I'm in. That yeah. would have been in my top 10 if I realized <laughs> it was in the John Wick universe. <laughs> so I'll start with the director, Lynn Wiseman. He directed the first three Underworld movies. He yes. produced the final two. It's starring, apparently in a small role, Keanu Reeves is going to be in it. Awesome. Ana de Armas, who is like an up-and-coming actress that I've seen in, in like a few films. And Knives Out. Like one Chloe. of my favorite new actresses. Oh, honestly. yeah. And then Chloe Grace Moretz. I like Ooh. literally don't need to know anything else. It's no, in the John Wick universe. It's so crazy how the John Wick had the kind of a really basic plot in one. And slowly but surely, as each movie happened, it like built its universe to the point where I'm just happy to go back into the universe and learn more of how everything works. Yeah, I know next to nothing outside of the people involved. And I don't need to because I know it will be awesome. Besides Keanu Reeves and on which those two actors alone whoa but we also have norman reedus from the walking dead boondock scenes oh yeah there we go and i believe this is also one of lance riddick's last films yeah he's in this as well i think it's the last one. Oh, it is his last yeah. okay so that, that alone that, right there is a good reason to go see it in the theater may that man rest in peace did he pass away or did he retire he died he passed away oh my God. Oh, okay. I thought he just retired. Oh, yeah. I, am, I only know faces. Yeah, I, th I think he passed last year. Yeah, it was last year. Yeah, 2023. For but, sure. Yeah, I've always enjoyed him in the Horizon games. It'll be cool getting to see him one more time on the big screen. Also, I will stand Len Weissman. He is not why the Underworld sequels are flawed. The direction of those movies is excellent. It's everything else that is wrong with Underworld movies. And also, I am the biggest Underworld 1 stand imaginable. It is a perfect movie. Every single one of you listening to this needs to go watch it. I love all the movies, honestly. I haven't got to watch them yet. 
Okay. Although I know my mom movie. loves them, and that's saying something. <laughs> one is a perfect movie. The sequels are fun but flawed, but his direction is not what is wrong with those movies. That is what I would like to say. I agree with you. Moving on to the next one on our list here, changing pace a little bit too, back into something more for the family. We had June 14th, Tim's pick, Inside Out 2. Oh, yeah. Okay, I already established this with the TV shows. I'm a Pixar stan. Anything Pixar related, I'm automatically interested in because they make some of the best animated movies out there. I enjoyed Inside Out. It was a mid-tier Pixar film for me, but as far as I can tell, this is the only Pixar film we're getting this year, which is fine because two or three years ago, we had three of them come out or whatever. And I was like, wow, this is getting a bit much. They need to space it out. But I enjoyed the first Pixar enough. And Pixar typically doesn't miss. They've had a, a, out of their like 30 or so films, I think they've only missed on four or five of them, which is a pretty impeccable track record. I definitely think that this is going to be a hit. I don't know if it's going to be like an absolute masterpiece, but it's going to be, I think it's going to be really solid and maintain the typical Pixar quality we usually get. And I like the voice actors they added on. I like that they're bringing in new emotions for becoming a teenager. They're bringing in like depression and anxiety. So I feel like it's probably going to hit home a lot harder than we want it to. But I still think that it's going to be a good film and still be very enjoyable. I can't believe you said Inside Out was a mid-tier because let me tell you this. I still tear up over take them to the moon for me riley oh my gosh what the heck the first one was very deeply emotional i feel like if they continue with that especially now with anxiety and how it's just very rampant in all ages these days i think yeah. it could be very intense yeah hopefully display in a, in a good way like the first one was the next film still in june here the Bike Riders. Ruby, you and I had this one on our list. It was originally supposed to come out in 2023, but it did get pushed to 2024. It follows the rise of a Midwestern motorcycle club as it evolves over the course of a decade from a gathering place for local outsiders into a more sinister gang, threatening the original group's way of life. Yes, the plot tells the fictional story inspired by a photo book, which is very mm. interesting. So really, the thing that sold me on this movie, because I really wasn't sure, were two things. The cast, which I'm sure, Christopher, you saw, is incredible. Austin Butler, which has become one of, a new favorite. Tom Hardy, Jodie Comer, Norman Reedus, and Michael Shannon are some of the actors in it. The thing that sold me, though, was the director, Jeff Nichols, I believe is how you pronounce his name, which he directed Midnight Special, which I've been trying to get Christopher to watch for about five years because I thought it was absolutely incredible. And I don't believe I've seen anything else by this director. Actually, like surprisingly, really like gang mob storylines. And so I think this could be an extremely interesting and very cool movie, especially with such an incredible cast. The writing looks great. The trailer looks really good. So I think it'll be good. Yeah, and I loved the show Sons of Anarchy, which is, again, about a motorcycle club. So that, And then you throw in Tom Hardy and Austin Butler, Michael Shannon. It's really good. The trailer definitely sold me as well. And I, I was... Honestly, sad that this one got pushed to 2024 because I was hoping to watch this by now, <laughs> for sure. I'm glad to see it was on your list as well, Ruby. So I admittedly never heard of this movie until this. Same, time. same. But okay, I am I am hooked. <laughs> Cast sounds awesome. The premise sounds awesome. I guess I just fell through the cracks because if I feel like if I would have found this movie and actually looked into it, it definitely would have made my top ten. Yeah, I think if you throw the trailer on, you'll be hooked. It's told from the perspective of Austin Butler's wife, it seems like. She's like telling it to yeah. a reporter or journalist or something like that. So she's talking about how she met him and then they got married five weeks later and all this stuff. <laughs> so yeah, it sounds like a, a wild but fun time. I think it's going to have a lot of heart, honestly, as well in the story. Moving on, I was surprised... None of you had this on your list, but maybe it's just because I'm 
a huge Quiet Place fan, but A Quiet Place Day One. It comes out in June as well, June 28th. I love A Quiet Place and the second Quiet Place movie. The second one was the first film that my wife and I went and saw together in the movie theater, actually. We started dating during the pandemic years later. Hey, let's go see a movie together for the first time in the movie theater. So we went and saw that. There's not a whole lot of information out there on what it's necessarily about, but as it hints about in the title, it is a prequel to the original Quiet Place. And so I'm just hoping they show more about what happened when the aliens arrived, honestly, because we got some of that a little bit in the second film, and I really was enjoying that. So I've never seen this franchise. Part of it is because I had the first one spoiled for me. Um. I was told the ending. And gotcha. that really killed the vibes for me. I'm in a different movie group on Facebook, and the person just flat out posted, man, I can't believe A Quiet Place ended with this. And bro, get the fuck out of here. Blah. That's why I haven't really been that interested in the sequels, because I never saw the first one, because I'm still in a funk from having that movie spoiled for me. I, I, I can fully tell you, I would probably enjoy these movies. And if I had seen them, it would have mm. been on my top 10. But I haven't seen them, so that's why it's not in my top 10. I, I don't think know you about the should other two, watch though. it, because honestly, these movies are really good i i did see that the th uh, another one was coming out i just didn't put it on my list it's great honestly fantastic acting i was very skeptical about a quiet place part two which is the title but honestly i really liked it and also killian murphy was in it with emily blunt so you've got fantastic actors i don't know who's cast in the third one or anything i am interested in it because i feel like both in part one and part two, we've seen the first day told through multiple views. So it will be interesting to see if it's just the whole movie just takes place on the first day or if it's new characters and old characters or what. But I think it's definitely interested in seeing it. Yeah, I believe it's a whole new cast. For me, if I'm being honest, the reason why I didn't have it on my list is because I saw the first one, which I thought, was a super unique horror movie. I actually loved it. And I don't actually have a good reason, but I didn't get to watch the second one. I felt like I needed to watch the second one before I could put that movie on the top 10 list. That's fair. But yeah, I don't have any reason to not watch it, or at least the second part to get to this one. I kind of hard on horror movies nowadays because I feel like they're like most of the time cheap, like cash grabs. So I remember watching that thinking this was like a super fresh horror movie that like, legitimately created these oh my god i just thinking <laughs> about it created these like super tense scenes oh man so yeah i think growing off of what adam said if you like the genre of suspenseful horror movies these movies don't have a ton of blood and gore but the scenes are some mm. of the most intense you will find in any movie and interestingly enough there's only two scenes in the whole first movie that have any music in it. One is playing on the radio, and then the other is the scene that Tim talked about. But other than that, it is silent, and you are literally on the edge of your seat, holding your breath, losing your mind, yeah. tense. And it's just like that for the entire movie. It's just this silent, you feel like everyone in the movie is holding their breath, where it's just tense, and it never stops until the credits. and honestly really unique and very cool direction it went yeah definitely i just remember full time seeing the movie if someone was eating popcorn in the movie theater <laughs> you knew and you were pissed off like definitely eat your popcorn during the trailers otherwise you're like sneaking one kernel at a time because I, I would say like a good like at least half of the movie is just yeah and there's like someone who speaks sign language so there's barely even a talking in it it is, it is fun, though, to crank the volume at home in the dark when it's quiet oh, no. and then watch it. I'd recommend doing that. Anyway, <laughs> very excited for A Quiet Place Day 1. Now, as we move into July, towards the end of July, we have Deadpool 3 on July 26. And Tim, Adam, and I have that on our list for this year. What can you say? The first two Deadpool movies are funny beyond all belief and recognition. I'm ready to continue those nonstop laughs of Deadpool just making as crass humor as possible. I'm in. I, I don't need to know anything more. It's Deadpool 3. Yeah, I was thinking about it when I was adding it to my list today. And I honestly think some of my favorite theater experiences 
revolve around seeing Deadpool movies. So I'm excited to see this one in the theater and it's got Hugh Jackman and I think it's the only MCU movie coming out this year, I believe as well. So I'm excited. And it's Deadpool's first time in the MCU. Yes. Excellent point, Adam. And I quick research. I think this is a testament to the series. Deadpool 1 and 2 are 3 and 4 in highest grossing rated R films of all time. As someone We're, who has not seen the first two movies, I really want to watch them so that I can go see this one because I really like Ryan Reynolds and I'm super excited for Wolverine to be back. I love Wolverine, but I've stayed away from Logan. I have not watched it. But just, one. I know, I remember watching when like, Ryan Reynolds released that, they did that little bit where they're like, look who's back. I lost my mind. And I think the world lost their mind. And then seeing the leaked photo of him in his comic accurate suit, I feel like it's going to be crazy for a lot of people. So I, I do really want to see this. Yeah. And apparently also just started out there. There's, I actually don't know if their memes are real, but there's a plethora of supposed cameos that are supposed to be in the movie. And I feel like some of them are actually true and they're going to do really fun ways to do cameos because Deadpool actually has a track record of doing really funny cameos. <laughs> and Brad Pitt show up in the first one just, one just to die for like He showed up in the second one to get electrocuted, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. for free. Yeah. I, I feel like we're going to have some fun cameos. It's going to be hilarious. Ryan Reynolds owns the role of Deadpool. Having Hugh Jackman come back is like just such a huge deal. So we have a huge jacked man come back. Do you think Hugh Jackman will sing? I hope so. It would fit, to be honest. I, I think I think make he, it if anyone could pull it off in the MCU, it would be in a Deadpool movie. It worked in the Marvels. I'm so excited. I'm just ready for this to be the uh, number one grossing R-rated film, because that's what it's going to be. What are the top two, Adam? Oppenheimer is number okay. two, and Joker is number one. Ooh. Okay. The second one's oh. coming out this year, isn't it? Joker. It is. We'll talk about that. Okay. It is. So switching lanes here. Ruby. This switching lanes 2nd. hard. Hard switching lanes. But yeah. We got Harold and the Purple Crayon. August 2nd. Oh, 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 holy shit. That's a okay. movie? Wait. So a little background on this. I came across this and was shocked to find out that this was coming out as a movie. I was even more shocked to find out that there have previously been two the Purple Crayon movies made, and I was floored. If anyone doesn't know who Harold the Purple Crayon is, great book. It yes. follows the protagonist, Harold, who is a curious four-year-old boy who, with his Purple Crayon, has the power to create a world of his own simply by drawing it. I have a nephew and soon a niece, and so I was like, oh, this is something great to look into because it's a great book. Very interestingly enough, while the two previous creations of this were animated this is actually live action which i don't know how to feel about because i feel like this type of story is the type to be told in animation some of the cast it cast is Catherine davis zoe desh channel from new girl and zachary levi oddly enough i couldn't figure out who was playing harold I really have no idea what this movie is going to be like, but I am interested in it now that I've done my research. And honestly, like, I just really want it to be good. Like, it's one of those things where it's just like, please be good. If not, it'll definitely be weird and it'll be something. Probably we'll see some memes of it if it's not good, but interested in seeing it. Yeah, odd movie. I was going to ask Ruby, do you know if it's getting like a full theatrical release or is this limited to a specific streaming service? I didn't see it associated with any streaming service, oddly enough. I don't know how exactly it would be coming out in theaters, but I do know there's a lot of toy movies coming out now. So I don't know if this will be with that path, but yeah, I didn't see it associated with any streaming service. Okay. So Again, I just stumbled across cool. it and was just so confused. Okay. but. I'm sold. That sounds like a great time. Child of nostalgia, take the wheel. Let's go. I'm in for an hour and a half of Harold drawing stuff and creating worlds. Let's go. Yeah. I did see it was an hour and a half, so you nailed okay. it. 
It'll be an yeah, hour. Yeah, you do. <laughs> awesome. Again, switching lanes here. Tim, a little bit later on August 9th, you had Borderlands. Ah, yes. I played the ever living crap out of Borderlands 2 with my college roommate. There is no game I've logged in more hours than Borderlands 2. Uh, I never played one or three. I've just played two, but it's a super fun universe. The graphic style in those games is 10 out of 10. I absolutely adore it. Jack Black is playing Claptrap, and that's really all I need to know about the movies because he's the perfect voice actor for Claptrap. I am down for fun visuals, lots of shooting guns, and I am down for lots of weird, quirky humor. And uh, yeah, let's go. Is it going to be good? Debatable, but I'm interested. This live action? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm hoping that there is a copious amount of guns because the gun porn is half the reason to play the games. You will be so sick of seeing guns by the time you're playing those games. It's But that's half the fun. Lots of guns, lots of cool visuals, lots of action. I'm in. And I have a lot of uh, nostalgia associated with that game for playing that with my college roommates. I'm also a big fan of Borderlands. Admittedly, nervous about it. But I'm going to watch it. It actually has a pretty stacked cast. It's got Kate Blanchett, Kevin Hart, Jamie Lee Curtis, Bobby Lee. Yeah, I am intrigued, but I will be going in very cautiously. I think if you have an action movie that Jamie Lee Curtis is in, that's a pretty good sign. Adam, do you know who's playing Handsome Jack? I am looking at a cast right now. It doesn't show. Okay, we'll find out. TBD. I'm sure we'll find out relatively sooner rather than later. Yeah. yeah. Really isn't out there, though, huh? All right. Moving on. Yeah. Yes. yes. Finishing out August on the 30th Ruby, you had Craven the Hunter. Okay. This is probably my second most anticipated movie oh. of the year. I have been so excited for this since it was announced and the trailer dropped. It is a Marvel film. And as everyone knows, the rules of Marvel, if a character dies in Marvel, they never actually die. And if you unless are one of the five characters, unless you're one of the five characters that actually ever dies, you get recast. So this stars Aaron Taylor Johnson, who used to be Quicksilver and is now playing Craven. He also stars next to Russell Crowe, which is great. So basically, he is born to an abusive father. Sergei Kravenov survives to become a maniacal big game hunter in Africa after imbibing a potion to enhance his physical prowess. He sets off on a mission to become the world's greatest hunter, and it is the story of one of Marvel's most iconic villains. So apparently this is one of Spider-Man's biggest villains in the comics, and it's going to focus on his origin story. It's rated R. It looks very violent and absolutely incredible, and I am actually just... So excited for it. I haven't seen Aaron Taylor Johnson in a lot, but I really like the stuff I have seen him in. I've wanted to watch him in Bullet Train for a long time. And And kick ass. Yes. And I am just so insanely hyped for this movie. I don't even know why, but I am. And I think it's going to be really good. All right, Ruby, you sold me. I am down. I'm not a comic person. I've never heard of Craven at all before, ever. Oh, snap. Oh. There until this movie came out. I didn't even know he was like Spider-Man's villain or anything. I'm a so. Spider-Man nerd, so I was aware. But yeah. I had no idea that Kraven was even a thing because all I've seen are like all the movies that have come out and everybody always does Green Goblin or Vulture or Sandman or Venom. I've never heard of Kraven. That's cool that we're getting a fresh new Spider-Man villain. And it's not only we're getting the villain, but we're getting an origin story where he's the protagonist in this film. Yeah. I don't even believe Spider-Man is no, in the film. It doesn't just look like fully it. his origin story. It looks brutal, violent, and really fantastic. I guess Marvel's doing more R stuff. Cause... And also, Russell Crowe is a fantastic actor. That's cool that you are excited about Kraven the Hunter, because I think he was originally supposed to come out in 2023, right? It was. I don't... Was. Oh, okay. Was it delayed? Yeah. That it makes sense, because I was thinking, I was like, the trailer came out quite a while ago. Okay, and as somebody who hasn't seen the trailer yet, is it going more like action movie direction or is it just... It's action. Basically, in the trailer, it shows lion blood 
getting in his system and he's vicious where he's ripping people apart. He's got like crossbows and I'm pretty sure he's tracking down all of the associates of his abusive father and just murdering them all. I don't know why. It looks so good. Like you have to watch you the trailer have sold after me this. Completely. Good lord. Yeah, the, the trailer makes Craven look like a total badass. Like all right. Yeah. This like, is going and, on my radar. And, ASAP. and also just I think Aaron Taylor Johnson is just gonna kill this role because I can't quite remember the trailer exactly, but just watching the trailer, I was like, holy crap. I don't think I would be as excited for this movie if he wasn't in it because just watching him in the trailer, I was like, this is going to be a really good performance. I'm glad you're excited about it. You brought the excitement for all of us, it sounds like. So (laughs) we're all checking it out now. Jumping into October 4th, Adam, you had Joker. This is French, I believe. So forgive me. Folie de de all? Folie Mm -hmm. adieu. Folie adieu. Thank you, Folie adieu. Yes, man. I am just so intrigued because of the big departure. It's a sequel, but it's a musical. A what? And wait, are you not? A, okay. Okay. Did you, by chance, did, who watched, I guess, the first Joker movie? Unfortunately. Oh, wow. You hated it. Okay. But that's okay. Um, 70 millimeter at IMAX. Beautiful. It, it, you know, it, to give a little bit of context. Yeah, no, whatever. It's called The Joker. It it talks about a man having a descent into the character that we know as The Joker or whatever. And the follow-up to this movie is supposed to be a musical where they introduce Harley Quinn, played by Lady Gaga. And it's, from my understanding, supposed to be a full-blown musical, which there was no musical elements to the first movie. So this is such a wild departure that I am just intrigued by the creative decision to make this, to do this. And yeah, I I feel like this is a feast or famine movie. It's going to be either like super good or it's going to be super bad. And I'm going to watch it day one. Okay. That lady, Lady Godkin, she's a good actress. It is interesting though that, because I've heard so much about, because so many people are excited for it over the years, that they're making it a musical. I did not hear anything about that until now. And I think that element is why I'm the most excited to watch it, because it's just so different. Like a comic book movie that's a musical. In terms of the cast, you obviously have Joaquin Phoenix coming back as the Joker. Lady Gaga is going to be Harley Quinn. Zazie Beetz is coming back. As her character from the Joker, I'm interested to see what they do with her because I just love Zazie Beetz. Yeah, I feel like the Joker was cinematically like a really shot movie. I think it looked really well. Given the material, it was, I thought it was pretty well written and building a character, this, this into madness and what could lead him into that thought process or whatever. There was a lot of, social commentary and critique on like how we deal with mental health and stuff like that. And given the relationship between Harley Quinn and the Joker and like comic book past, I would imagine they'll continue to have a voice in the mental health world. Yeah. It's just such a weird movie. It's so weird. Cause I remember watching the Joker the first time I was like, all right, that's a one and done movie. There's no way to build off that. And then we're getting a whole new movie. It's really because the director anticipated just to be a one and done movie, but it had so much success. It was the number one grossing rated R movie that they got the green light for a sequel. And he was like, yeah, let's do a musical thriller. Why not? Why not? Do you happen to know, just because I didn't watch the original Joker, so I don't know if it followed of the comic book storylines where this no. Harley Quinn... Because there's two different Harley Quinns in the comics. So would this just be a totally fresh take? It's completely well? unrelated to Batman. That's a shame because it would be really cool to see that Joker with the new Batman. Yeah. But okay, it is that unrelated. was my original complaint about the original movie. I wanted it to be more connected to Batman. So it's a me problem. For one, it is. It's a well-made movie, but I wanted it to be related to Batman. I think that's fair. I have really enjoyed that D does sometimes choose to make the one-off films that aren't always connected with 
every other film like Marvel does. So I, I for one, kind of enjoyed that they're like, hey, yeah, let's do that. Why not? I, I only watched The Joker one time, and it was in the movie theater, just because it was, to its credit, I, I think, very intense, dark. Very dark. But something that I, I think, as a piece of art, and as a film, just in general, like I thought was really well done and do recommend watching it once <laughs> at least definitely gotta be in the right mindset to well, go into it though for sure so i'll yeah, definitely have to it, ramp up to that one yeah it, it, it's <laughs> definitely a downer you, you don't just say oh i'm just gonna watch schindler's list on a whim you have to mentally prepare for that movie oh man and yeah. joker you also have to mentally prepare for it adam kind of continuing on with your list here jumping into november 8th you had gladiator 2 Oh, okay. There's so many movies on my list that I just had no idea were happening until I did research for this. I didn't even know Gladiator 2 was happening. And I was like, what? What? And the curiosity, have y'all seen Gladiator 1? I have 1? not. Fuck yes, yeah, so of course I've seen Gladiator. Okay. okay. I love Gladiator. I have not, Adam. Oh, man. I'm Gladiator glad. was the pinnacle of 2000 cinema, let's be honest. It's okay, but I am mildly judging. That's okay. It's just one of the <laughs> best movies from my childhood period and the fact that it's getting a sequel like ish years since its release is just 24 really is it oh it came out in 2000 exactly i'm pretty sure it did if not it was like 99 i'm looking yeah, this up yeah, right yeah. now See, this... I, I looked into the cast and i was like oh denzel washington is in this what and also joseph quinn i don't know if anyone is familiar with his work stranger things Okay, you um, have my attention. Oh, yes. Pedro Pascal, who is like one of my favorite actors nowadays. Hell yeah. So it's getting an influx of new actors. I don't know at all what's going on. And honestly, there's not a lot of plot either. It's given. It's just in the future, effectively. And then that's it for the most part. Um, so it does take place after the first yes, one. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, there's little to no details on it. I don't believe there's a trailer, but it's there is not. Gladiator. I don't care. It could suck. But <laughs> Ridley Scott has a pretty good track record. Yeah, I just have faith in Ridley Scott. I usually watch all of his movies. He is wavered as of late, in my opinion. His only really good movie since Gladiator. I liked some of his films he's made since Gladiator, but his only real hit Ooh. was The Martian. After that, yeah, I've not really been that great. thrilled. The Martian was great. Not you know, been that thrilled with, with Ridley Scott's work since. Like, Alien Covenant, I will admit man, there, Prometheus, there, worse. Yeah, I can agree. He's had some movies that are controversial too bad. But, he had, but when you look at his whole body of work, I think yes. he, generally, he generally is making, like, good movies. So I, I would agree I, with that. So... Well, I'm, I am a little nervous, but uh, it just has such a like warm place in my heart. That movie, Gladiator. I am just super excited to watch the sequel. Hopefully, he can do the story justice because that is honestly like an all timer type movie. And he he's got a few movies under his belt that are like all timers. So. Uh, okay, so the way I would see it is, I wouldn't necessarily, from what I know about the movie, I'm not going to view it as a sequel. I'm going to view it as another story in that universe. I think that would be a better way of viewing it. We'll see, though. When that trailer drops, though, you can bet your ass I'm watching. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was number 12 on my list, so it, it didn't quite make it in there, but I'm very excited for Gladiator 2. Number 11 on my list, funny enough, was the, ne the next film here that Tim and Ruby had coming out on December 13th, which is Lord of the Rings, War of the Rohirrim. I'm actually very interested because it is an animated film which i think we haven't seen any lord of the rings animated takes place some sources said 260 years others said 183 i don't think it matters much basically it takes place a couple hundred years before the, the events of the lord of the rings it ties in with the peter jackson films and jar Earl tolkien's novel where it is about the king of rohan helm hammerhand and when uh, Dunlending Lord Wolf comes seeking revenge, he is forced to his people into the stronghold. And it is basically the story 
of the legend of Helm's Deep, which Helm's Deep is the pinnacle of fantasy fight in the rain. You can't get better than that in cinema. And I'm really excited because actually the voice of Eowyn, Miranda Oddperson, who plays the villain Wolf, is played by Luke Pascalino, which honestly, very underrated actor. I've only seen him in a few things, but he's great in the stuff I watch him in. And I recognize him now or when he's in stuff, I'm like, ooh, I want to watch that. I'm actually quite excited for this. I think, especially since it's going to be animated, it's going to be very different, very interesting. And of course, it's Helm's Deep. Like, why wouldn't you watch it? Okay, I'm going to be completely level with y'all. I heard new Lord of the Rings content, and I was like, yes, I'm in. Up until I looked up the IMDb profile, I didn't realize it was animated, but that has me very excited now because, as Ruby said, it's going to be very different. But I am very interested in it because Lord of the Rings content, and yeah, no, I'm very excited for it. Helm Deep, as Ruby said, is one of the best fight scenes in all of cinema ever. It does not matter what genre. It is a top-tier fight scene. All in straight up. It's a banger. Anything more involving that? Yes, please. Also... Brian Cox is a voice in it, and I love that man's voice. He was the villain in X-Men 2. He was also in The Bourne Identity and The Bourne Supremacy. He was one of the top CIA people. He's been in some good shit. Who does he play in the Lord of the Rings movie? He plays uh, the Helm Hammerhand. Oh, oh, okay. So he's like the main character. He's got a good kingly voice for that. Okay, Mm. okay. Yeah, I can see that. I love Brian Cox as an actor. It's so funny. I'm so guarded with Lord of the Rings that, like, when new content comes, this is, like, the reason why I haven't watched the show. I get so angst that it's going to ruin Lord of the Rings. I know it's directed by Kenji um, and Phoebe Grittens and R.T. Papa. Kenji is known for, this is anime, but Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex, which is one of the anime ever. So that's good, at least. Yeah, have... especially if this is animated. That's a good sign. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I'm just so anxious about new Lord of the Rings content. I'm going to wait until, like, people watch I'll it. I'll let you know. Can... Yeah. I'll let you know, Adam. You can trust me on whether or not it's good. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm excited for Lord of the Rings, though. I feel like we're very uh, fortunate to be getting new Lord of the Rings content, period. So good and bad. Bring it on. Jump into December again. I have Mufasa, the Lion King. Lion King has always been very dear to me. One of my favorite films growing up as a kid. Still love it. The live action looking, still animated Lion King that came out uh, a few years ago. Overall, we had a really good time with it. I know it was polarizing, but I thought it was beautiful. Really enjoyed it. So I'm excited about this one. The synopsis is Simba, having become king of the Pride Lands, is determined for his cub to follow in his paw prints while the origins of his late father, Mufasa, are explored. So I thought this was a prequel, which is where I was, eh, no. But is this going to be tying into Lion King 2? Which surprisingly, I actually really liked Lion King 2, the animated one. I think out of all of the the Disney sequels, which have a reputation for not being the greatest, I thought it was pretty solid. And one of the few ones that actually had some good musical elements to it, if they did decide to tie in some of King 2, I think that could be really cool to see. And it's live action, or is it animated? Looks like it's live action, but it's technically animated. But I think it's a little bit of both, Ruby, so it's... Simba talking to his cub, so it's taking place after the movie that just came out. But it's going to be following Mufasa, who obviously isn't around anymore. So I think we bounce them a little bit back and forth, which I think should make for a really interesting film. Honestly, it's what I'm most excited about when it comes to December, even over Lord of the Rings, put it that way. I'll judge it when the trailer comes out and then see what the reviews are before I see it. Okay. That is totally fair. I didn't see The Lion King till I was an adult. Oh, oh. snap. Fun fact. Lion I do King. like it, but... The Lion King was my first movie ever. The Lion King I is love- the staple 
of a childhood. My <laughs> brother-in-law didn't see it until we met him. And it was one of the first movies we ever watched with him besides <laughs> Princess Bride. Because we're like, oh, no, you need to see this now. It's interesting that, like you, Adam, it was one of the first three movies I ever saw. Honestly, I was obsessed with Lion King and Tarzan. So, and Dumbo. And, and Dumbo. So yeah, all I have to say, it has a very special place in my heart. Anyway, ending our list at number 25. This comes out five days later after Mufasa, The Lion King. On December 25th, Christmas, Tim and Adam, you had, is it Nosferatu? Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Yes, thank you. I know nothing about this, so please share. <laughs> Go ahead, Adam. Okay, Robert Eggers is my favorite top three directors right now. I love his movies. They're perfect. Well, they're not perfect. They're weird, and I love it. He has a pretty good track record of just making these really original movies. He initially started with The Witch. I don't know if anyone's watched that. And then I think his second film was like really what brought him to form The Lighthouse. I saw that in the theater all by myself. Oh my God, that, that is was a movie. solid. That is a movie to watch by yourself. Oh man, wait in a theater by yourself? Yeah, there was nobody else. Oh, that's so me. strange. I wouldn't even know how to take that. That's yeah. I walked that out is... there and I was like, "What the what fuck the did fuck? I just watch?" <laughs> and I couldn't talk to anybody about it because like, that... there was literally nobody else in the theater. <laughs> he that was a movie he put so much symbolism in. It's really great. And yeah. in his most recent film, The Northman. Oh man, the Skarsgård. What's his name? Alexander Stop. Stop. Skarsgård. Yeah. Yeah, he, he doesn't have a super long career, but he's consistently put out like most interesting movie of the year that it came out. So I'm just all on board on whatever he's doing. This is a remake of a movie that came out way, way back in 1922. It's an official adaptation to Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah, the cast is super sick. You got... Bill Skarsgård, you got the other Skarsgård for this one to star. Uh -huh. Nicholas Holt, Lily Rose Depp, Johnny Depp's daughter, and William Defoe. And it's like super sick cast, super cool director, interesting premise. Sign me up. And for Ruby's sake, it also has Aaron Taylor Johnson. I forgot he was in there, yeah. Yes. I didn't have any movies I had Aaron Taylor Johnson on until I compiled all of them. And I was like, oh. This is a trend. So. Yes. I didn't realize that he was the director. I was excited because, yes, vampire horror movie, Christmas time. Let's go. It's going to be a wonderful change of pace from the normal. I'm not going to say when it comes to Christmas time, I'm a Grinch, but I am not as passionate about Christmas as other people. I like all the non-conventional Christmas movies like Die Hard and Krampus. And yeah. I'm down for a good vampire horror movie with Willem Dafoe in it. I'm in. It does sound really interesting. Yes, a gothic tale of obsession between a haunted young woman and the terrifying vampire infatuated with her, causing untold horror in its wake. Do you happen to know, this isn't going to be in black and white like The Lighthouse, right? No, oh. the images that have been posted on IMDb are color. Oh, okay. cool. Okay, cool. Cool. I, I think it could work either way, so I was oh, curious. one other thing I forgot to mention. Inter Robert Eggers. Yes. As he stated that he wanted this to actually be his second movie, but... It, it's like a passion project of his that he's wanted to do since he became a director. And obviously The Lighthouse became his second film, which did wonders for him and gave him a lot of leeway in terms of projects he can pick. Eventually he did get to it, but it was just interesting seeing him talk about it. And the 1922 film had such a big impact on him and he wanted to recreate that. And yes. just seeing that passion in him just talking about it makes me excited for whatever the hell we're going to get. And he just had such a good track record of putting out really interesting films that I think whatever this is, it's going to be great. He's got to put everything he has into it. And Willem Dafoe does not miss in his roles. Say he what does. you will. I when agree. Willem Dafoe was in a role, he is not the reason why that movie goes wrong. Willem Dafoe is good at what he does. That has me especially excited. It sounds like a banger to end our list and to end the year. Hell yeah. <laughs> I know there were other films that we're also excited about that are supposed to be coming out this year as well. I can't remember who had those, but if you want to throw them out there, you can. Spider-Verse 3, Mission Impossible. I'm very intrigued by a movie called Mother's Instinct. It looks like it could either be an extremely good thriller or possibly a flop. Yeah. It 
it has Anne Hathaway and Jessica. I'm blanking on her name. But basically, they both have sons, and one of them dies. And stuff gets weird. One of the mothers starts getting obsessed with the other mother's son. And then she starts being like, did my best friend kill my son? And then the other mother's, is my best friend going to kill my son? It could be Jeez. really good. And unfortunately, it doesn't. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I think it could be really good. And Adam, you had a couple too, right? Yep. I'll start off with Mickey 17. It's a super interesting concept. Robert Pattinson is the main actor. And he plays a disposable employee is on a human expedition to colonize an ice world. After one iteration dies, a new body is regenerated with most of his memories intact. So it's like a big existential crisis type of movie. The director of that movie also directed Snowpiercer and Parasite. The other movie is called Blitz. It's, it's going to be Apple Plus TV. World War II historical documentary. The main reason why I was excited about that is because it was directed by a director named Steve McQueen. He Ooh. movies like Widows, 12 Years a Slave. But yeah, there's no information on it. There's no release date. I just know it's a World War II historical drama. He's a director and he has a pretty solid track record. So I'm probably tuning in. Love it. So that's five more films to throw on there. So a lot to look forward to in 2024, starting in February, basically, <laughs> which is awesome. But yeah, thank you guys all so much for yeah. taking the time, putting together your top 10 and coming prepared and, and ready to dive into the details. Even with all the strikes that happened last year, looks like a really solid year of films coming out, honestly. Indeed. Watch them all. Go watch them all in the theater. Be there every week. <laughs> be be a broke bitch. If I'm being honest, the theater close by has a nice little Tuesday six dollar special. I'll be going in on most Tuesdays this year to watch whatever new movies coming out. There you go. Or get that AMC A list. Do something, but go see these <laughs> movies. <laughs> but again, thank you guys. And with that, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Cinema Club. If you would be interested in coming on the show in the future, please email us at the Cinema Club TCC at gmail.com. Also, if you have not yet already done so, I would encourage you to join the Cinema Club Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash the Cinema Club TCC, where we share what television series or films will be featured in upcoming episodes on the show. I'm sure you're listening to this episode on your preferred streaming platform but I wanted to make you aware that you do have options. The Cinema Club is available on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and now YouTube as well at The Cinema Club Podcast. Please also consider giving the show a review on iTunes as it does really help the show. And finally, we are completely supported by listeners like you. If you love the show, please consider visiting our website and clicking the Support This Podcast button. You can check that out at podcasters.spotify.com slash pod slash show slash the cinema club. Your contribution of even 99 cents a month goes directly to maintaining and growing the cinema club podcast. Thank you so much to those of you who already financially do support the cinema club, and we will catch you on the next one.